So probably need some more natural pathways that could be skied on. So it's the, it's the plowing mostly that got in the way of it? Yeah. Yes. Um, I saw on your timeline you have pretty much everything listed in, like uh, park dev development, such like that. But an important component of this is the architectural and building components that are going to be in the middle of that. Is that going to happen concurrently? Is that going to happen like 10 years down the road? Is it going to be like this is a proof of, proof of concept and then we're going to sell the land? The, well, oh. sorry, that's awfully loud. <laughs> Uh, the, the development is actually intended to uh, commence concurrently. We, we are not able to actually open any buildings before flood protection is in place. The province doesn't allow it. Um, however, the, in, uh, the desire and I think the market and our intent is that as soon as the river has been constructed and the flood protection is in place, then what you see in terms of uh, development will begin immediately. Go ahead. So if it, how are we going to pay for it all? I, I think there was original, it looks very amazing. It looks expensive too. And it, I think the, I, the model of how we're going to pay for things has changed. So there's going to be less like uh, residential development. So how, and we were already kind of, as you know, squished for money. So how? The, well, in terms of the river, the um, three levels of government, the city, no, the province, that, and the... No, I mean, aside from the $1.25 billion for a flood, all the, all the rest of All this, the development? Yeah, all the, no, all the nice park stuff. That's, that's actually part of the $1.25 billion. Oh, it so, is? So, yeah, okay. so we are constructing okay. um, all but two of the parks will be constructed as part of this project. And that includes, I went to the, it, all, that includes the bridges and the road the, reconstruction? That's right. The bridges, the roads, services nice. will all be built. Go ahead. Hey guys, uh, great work up there. I just wanted to, <clears throat> it's more of a comment. Um, it looks fantastic. Uh, you guys look like you've done a lot of work, hard work. Um, I really like the, uh, the idea of the mixed levels, um, integrating the, uh, all the play areas. I, I like the idea of the adult uh, play area integrated with the nature. Um, really well thought out, good work. So just wanted to let you guys know that. Great. So anyone else who has a question? So the, um, the funding that was given, the 1.25, does it cover what you're talking about here or does it go further south of uh, this village? No, effectively what you see on that, um, in that model is the uh, covering or is what comprises the $1.25 billion project. And do you know if there is any further development beyond this area or is that's not part of your scope? Um, there will be further development. Uh, the entire Portlands uh, has been uh, planned, or at least the framework for the planning has uh, happened, been approved by the city uh, last year, at the end of last year, and the intent is that development will um, commence in Villiers Island and will continue throughout the, uh, the rest of the undeveloped parts of Portlands. Thank you. Uh, my question is about the regulatory flood. That's the one we're using right now, but what about in the future? Are you guys looking towards like future events, climate change, larger events in the future? Um, so uh, we're working very closely with uh, TRCA, uh, Toronto Region Conservation Authority, on the updated flood models that they've been looking about uh, climate changes. Um, and the, uh, the current work that we're doing is based on the, the flood model that was developed during the environmental assessment for the Don Mouth. However, as part of the validation that the TRCA has been looking at, it still is um, identifying that the parameters that we are basing the design off of is appropriate. Hi, wondering how the project is going to uh, flow into or conflict with Tommy Thompson Park and also curious as to uh, what affordable housing standards are going to be put in place? Chris, both. <laughs> um, with regard to Tommy Thompson, I think these two projects are very complementary. So the, uh, the, the, the flood protection that we're putting in place here and the parks that we're putting in place here will serve uh, the Portlands area and will serve those neighborhoods. Tommy Thompson will continue to be the nature preserve that it effectively is. Um, Waterfront Toronto actually funded some work there and there's some more projects going in. So there's the uh, staff booth that you pass on the way out, the bird banding station, the uh, bird viewing amphitheater. There'll be a new uh, building going in at the entrance soon. 
So we're definitely seeing it all as part of a kind of comprehensive park system. In terms of affordable housing, um, the uh, Waterfront Secondary Plan and City Council policy has been uh, that 20 percent of uh, units have to be affordable and we will continue to pursue that in the Portlands and we're going to look at whether or not there are ways to even be a little more aggressive with that target uh, as we get out there. Hi guys, thanks. It's great work. Looks fantastic. Um, tiny comment that I notice in all of these wonderful displays of stuff is that we see all this green space in summer and wonderful things, but Toronto has this winter thing that happens that I want to hope gets thought in there. Uh, the other thing is I just put a bug in your ear for the concept. I love that there's this waterfront, this kayak canoe kind of space. Um, this is a waterfront that's surrounded by marinas. Uh, it would be nice to see sort of a, a day use access that, that you can make as a destination to bring a boat, which means just a little bit of having some docks, some mooring, some spaces for, for recreational watercraft. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, you uh, talked about visual layering and integration, but I'm wondering about auditory. So like how much would you be able to hear all the nearby traffic downtown and on some of the fr nearby freeways and that kind of auditory integration and isolation in some cases? You stumped them. It's a very good question. <laughs> Let um, us take I, it away. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's a very good question. And one of the things we are considering is there's a lot of adjacent projects that are occurring at the same time, so, such as the Gardner, uh, the proposed Gardner location moving farther to the north. Um, but w as we dive more into detailed design, I'm certain we'll look at issues such as that that are more detailed. Okay, thank you. May not be in the project scope right now, but you guys have implemented a bit of trying to look there. So I'm wondering, has the city taken into consideration about the LRT, as you folks mentioned, on the eastern waterfront side, and on a pedestrian slash cyclist viewpoint, in terms of the Martin Goodman Trail that goes in different parts across the city, will there be will there be continuation of the path going east and west as well? Um, well. The Martin Goodman Trail and um, the uh, the other trail systems will are, are actually integrated in their plan. So I think one of the early diagrams they showed was the kind of connections network. So there will be uh, a continuation of all the trail systems really right through this site and linking back into the, the Don Valley Trail, the Martin Goodman Trail across Queens Key, once Queens Key is extended to the east. And there is uh, a... Um, an environmental assessment that was done for bringing transit out here. So there's a transit route plan to run down Cherry Street and along Commissioner Street to service this whole area. Hi, uh, so I, have I just want to say one thing. I want to go back to the sound for a second. Um, I want to meet the person on, that asked the sound question at the model later because uh, the issue with sound is really an issue of sight lines and distance. And one of the things that I think are, is going to be very good uh, as the Villiers Island builds out is it basically blocks all of the sight lines from the park side, uh, from the river park side of the gardener. Also, the gardener is moving away, so that's a distance issue as well. And it's high, which helps. So there is a good aspect to the urban design that I think will create a quieter zone. It could be mapped and analyzed, but it will it will create a, a quieter zone all through the river mouth park, um, once, especially once the buildings start to go up. Was that your question? I'm just kidding, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Um, so I have kind of a, a multi-layer question. Um, I actually run a, a creative space just uh, on Carlaw north of the Turning Basin. Mm -hmm. And so part of the question is, um, how much will this affect sort of the, the eastern part of the Portlands? Because there's sort of a chunk of the Portlands that is not included in this, but I'm sure we'll sort of have to change along with it. Um, the other part of the question is, um, as great as, you know, art installations, you know, in parks um, are, one of the movements sort of happening right now in the Portlands is use of, of space there for, for creative space, because it's, it's empty, it's undeveloped, and, and it's great for artists to, to come in and utilize it. Um, so whether or not that's sort of considered as part of the plan as well. Um, well, there's actually quite a bit of thinking about art going on and, and along the lines of what you're discussing. So certainly permanent public artworks will be part of this, but there is uh, the group that uh, Max Dean and um, 
Michael McClelland have been getting started, the Art Equals Waterfront, and we've already had some meetings with them to look at ways of animating on an interim basis some of these buildings that do have to go in order to unlock the river. And hopefully that can lead to a kind of ongoing program of uh, artist space being incorporated into the new development. It's not something that there's a lot of precedent for, but I think it's something we're interested in exploring. And then in terms of the east, the program for the river and the redevelopment is probably at least 20 years, uh, if not longer, um, for that to really begin to fill out. So I think you're pretty safe over on the, on the east side for a while. And if, if we're able to pilot a kind of um, different type of art program on the west, then hopefully that is carried over onto the east. Uh, sorry, just, just to add a little bit, not to hog the mic. Uh, is, so with Michael McClellan, I've actually met with Michael McClellan. Um, is there a plan to include some of the current, so Max Dean's there, I'm not sure what the state of versus 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 that's also there as well. Is there sort of a plan to include, include the current existing creative space in, in what's developed, or I guess that's maybe? You know, it sounds like you guys actually should talk right after this. Is that, you guys have, have, have a good in-depth conversation because I know Chris has more to say about it, but I wanna make sure we get to everyone's questions. And thank you for your question, by the way. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, so a question about, um, we looked at this piece of land, uh, the port lands, but about the impact of the, of the change of the flood protection upstream for the, on the Don River. The, um, the Don, you know, floods, um, Bayview gets flooded, the Evergreen gets flooded, the Don Valley Parkway gets flooded. Meanwhile, Metrolinx uh, want to put in, want to convert the CN line to a go, go, go line, uh, commuter traffic um, north, south, um, and they want to create go stations. So what is the impact of this project beyond the site? Is there going to be, is, does it actually protect uh, the the Don the rest of the Don Valley or, or, or you know is this a solution to the to the bigger issue or or is it limited to the outflow of of the river? It, it actually is limited to the outflow of the river. So the area that you saw in blue is the area that we're protecting. Um, the uh, Don Valley Parkway, the Evergreen, are all actually constructed in the floodplain. Um, because they're constructed in the floodplain, you'd have to move them out of the floodplain to protect them. The we just we can't do anything about that with this particular project. Um, TRCA, uh, I know the uh, folks from Evergreen are looking at these issues, and Evergreen are actually looking. You know, they've they've designed their space to be flooded. Um, they're actually pretty good at figuring out how to deal with floods um, because they happen fairly regularly. But uh, but this project won't deal with anything really north of that uh, CN rail line. So the fact that you're opening up the portal, allowing the water out, is not gonna. It, it won't reduce, well, it may reduce a little bit the flooding, but not in a regulatory storm. There will still be substantial flooding of the dawn um, north of this um, during those storms. Thank you. Thanks. Hi. Uh, two, two names, Sidewalk and Amazon. Uh, I heard a lot of talk about Sidewalk possibly getting their technologies into the Portland's area. And I also know that uh, in the Amazon pitch document that was sent out that, uh, that the Portland was kind of seen as a potential site. So I'm just curious as to what kind of influence these guys are gonna have in the area. So uh, Port, uh, as far as Amazon goes, I might actually get Mike Williams to respond to that um, because it was actually the city um, that led that process uh, for the Amazon pitch. Um, that we don't have any involvement with Amazon. Uh, with respect to Sidewalk, Sidewalk um, Labs are working with us over the next 12 months to, um, to look at uh, design and innovation for the Keyside uh, property, which is around um, the um, Parliament Slip. Um, and there will be, and we're looking at with the city, the potential for some certain pilots happening in that area and potentially in some other areas. Um, at the moment, what we're doing is not affected by um, sidewalk labs. Ultimately, if there are things that we come up with uh, with them in Keyside that uh, we in the city think should be implemented at a wider scale, then we would look at doing that um, at the appropriate time. But that's not happening right now. 
But there's going to be like a public consult when they come up with this. In so. fact, that's Mira. Can you speak to? Yeah, for that? sure. So um, the public consultation plan with a bunch of dates uh, that Waterfront Toronto and Sidewalk Labs put together um, together as partners um, was released uh, recently, and you can find it on our Facebook page, on our website, on um, the Sidewalk Toronto website. If you're interested in looking at how you can get involved, there are a number of ways from sort of light engagement all the way to very deep engagement. If you're interested in that project. Um, and then to David's point, we have uh, Mike Williams here Thanks, with Mike. Economic Development and Culture who is going to answer your question about Amazon. Uh, good good timing, right on cue. <laughs> good evening. Uh, Amazon was look, is looking for a site to put a lot of people, but they want to do it all in the next 10 years. So this particular site is not available until right at the end of that 10-year period. They are looking, if they consider Toronto, we're only one out of 20 cities, so factor the odds in there. Uh, at potentially the Unilever site or a lot of the downtown Toronto. The submission by Toronto Global included all of the downtown Toronto is one of the sites in the region and there's about 40 million square feet of potential development so there's plenty of space for them to go if they can show us to come here. Thanks. Thanks Mike. Looks like last question. Go ahead sir. Designed some amazing um, waterfront promenades there. Beautiful views I'm sure you could uh, get from there but Almost all of them are too short and fragmented. Imagine being at um, Sugar Beach, wanting to go for a stroll along the waterfront. You want to stick along the waterfront and maybe go towards um, Cherry Beach. It's an easy 45 minute to an hour walk, but people wouldn't do it in this plan because you have to zigzag back and forth away from the harbor front. So um, I'd like to see a little bit more thought about uh, connecting some of those, uh, like the Promontory Park connecting that to uh, the next uh, land rather than having to go way back into Cherry Beach and then go to uh, Cherry uh, Street to get back and then zigzag back to the waterfront. We, um, uh, around the same time that we conducted the design competition for the river, we did another one for the public realm uh, in the central waterfront area. And one of the components of the winning scheme was actually a series of bridges that would link across all of those fragmented waterways where you now have to zigzag around. And we don't have that currently funded in our plan, but we haven't forgotten about that proposal and that idea, and it's something we would very much like to find a way to, to fund and begin to implement so that you could have that continuous uh, water's edge walk. I've, I'm aware of the plan at Harborfront, and that should have been the very first thing to go in. And same here, I think that should be the very first thing to go in. That's so fundamental, going for a walk along the waterfront. We only have one waterfront. We should maximize the use of it. Thanks for your comment. Thanks. So um, just want to let everyone know um, that uh, we have some time left. If you didn't get a chance to um, participate in any of the different stations that are here, if you didn't ask a question because you didn't feel comfortable, you're also more than welcome to go up and write a comment on the cards at the table at the back next to our wall of envelopes. You can leave it in an envelope. You can hand it to one of our staff. Um, I also, Chris mentioned Evergreen, and I want to just uh, take a moment to thank uh, some staff from Evergreen who came to also talk to you tonight about the work that they're doing in the Don Valley, which is part of this bigger system. And I spy at the back um, MPP for Toronto Danforth, Peter Tavins, um, and just wanted to welcome him and thank him for coming and joining us tonight. Uh, so please stick around if you can, chat with our staff look at the model a little bit more, and thank you again for spending this time with us tonight. Thank you.